Good morning, South Anchorage High School. That was a rough way to bring you in this morning, but you know, that's what we can do when we're working one-handed for seven jobs. Uh, we got a great show for you today. Uh, lots of fun stuff to go over. First off, uh, we need to give you some update on some of the studio folks. Uh, Thomas is alive and well and eating cake for every meal. Um, Ozzy has logged off of Smash Brothers. That's pretty crazy for him. Then he walked outside, saw what was happening IRL, then went back inside and built a blanket tunnel and is logged back in. Um, John has turned himself into a Minecraft character. He actually is in the game. None of us here at the studio have the heart to let him know he's wearing cardboard boxes. Um, uh, before we get too far into today, we wanted to give you a couple of pieces of information that could help you as things move on uh, through how we're getting into school. And we're gonna hear a lot more about that in the next few minutes because we have some very special guests. Um, and one of our pros, our utility hitter, uh, uh, Bria has put together some fantastic uh, bits of information to help you figure out how to navigate your new classes. So this is a nice sped up version you're seeing right now, and you can get the real version with all the directions and everything else that goes with it um, by looking at the links in the description below. And they'll help you get onto Canvas to be able to use the classes that you're gonna have to be using in a little bit. So make sure you check those out. We have a fantastic help from Mr. Pernage, who is also putting those into the live chat. Make sure if you're watching today that you get into that live chat. Let us know uh, if you're not from South or if you are from South, say hi to some friends and you can put questions in there that we will answer as we go on. Uh, so we have some very special guests today. Uh, uh, specifically, uh, we have uh, Dr. Bishop joining us today um, and she is here to kind of go over some of what's happening in the district. We're gonna start out with Dr. Bishop. Dr. Bishop, uh, my family saw your video last night and uh, my wife cried, I, I gotta tell you the truth. Um, it was pretty intense. And it was during the moment where you were talking about our seniors. And you know, not everyone has been able to get to that pinned video, which is on the COVID-19 space on the ASD website. So folks can go watch that and we might get a link in the description here a little bit later. Um, but maybe you could touch a little bit on what you said, because I thought that was pretty pivotal on what was happening. Uh, sure, thank you. And I just wanna start out by say thank you for the invite to the show this morning and I appreciate um, just the time. I uh, really wanted to, to speak to our seniors because I, I do know that uh, this, the current circumstances have really disrupted, uh, you know, some of their, their, their hopes and dreams. And just uh, when you finish high school, it, it is a celebration and, and it is uh, coming together with your friends and family, um, doing the, the things that, we all remember for the rest of our lives about um, you know graduations or your senior prom, uh, the the last baseball game, things like that, um, the, the the best concert ever, your final concert, and and those things are disrupted. And uh, I'm not to saying that you're not going to have any memories. The memories are just going to be different. Uh, but to acknowledge that uh, those students who who have completed 13 years of school, uh, it is drastically different for them. And and I. I just wanted to apologize for that. I know that I, I didn't you know, cause any of this, but I feel responsible in not being able to deliver the kind of experience that uh, we want for kids in ASD. Thank you, I think that probably means a lot to a lot of people. And we got good news, so stay on air today, folks, and keep watching and, and let folks know back home because at the end of the show, we're gonna float an idea that might make some people feel pretty good about some stuff going on. We can see that Claire is very excited over in the corner there. Uh, and so as we move on to kind of a, another question to get into, uh, give us kind of an overview. What can we expect over the next few days for students at home? And we do have a lot of people that are watching that also have children that are middle school students and elementary school students. And we know we get emails, but as a parent too, we're getting like 15 or 20 of them a day, yeah. uh, all with different information. So can you give us a kind of a 10,000 foot overview of what to expect over the next few days? Sure, so uh, at the 10,000 foot view, we are really preparing for uh, the schools and then the teachers and staff within schools to really take over. We're really uh, setting up and standing up the, the internet and our connections and all these Zoom accounts so that students can use them. Uh, we're also over the next few days gonna deploy over 20,000 Chromebooks so that kids uh, can get distance delivery. And we're, we're starting with our seniors, so, uh, way down 
uh, in regard to Wi-Fi too. So we're going to set up some hotspots. We're getting those in this week so that we, we want to be sure that kids uh, across the district are all connected. Um, the courses are set up, but they're set up in kind of a standardized way. And then from there, I know that you're going to talk about Canvas today, but from there, uh, the expectation and, and really the, the fun of it is the creativity that happens right at individual schools and individual classrooms. Our, our teachers are, are good at what they do, and so we hope that they uh, can engage with kids and, 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 and know, uh, you know that they have those, those freedoms to fly with them. Um, one thing that we wanted to be sure not to do, if this isn't something that either our staff or teachers or, or students have done before, we're going to take one step at a time. But the skills that you're learning now, they're they're the future so that you're just going to be that much more prepared we believe uh, i know that those that are headed to college or even to the workforce much of the coursework especially in the under um the the, the lower end courses at college as well as uh, workforce trainings are all done electronically and, and learn electronically take assessments electronically so uh, we know that this is going to be good in the end uh, but we hope to see some creative things come out of it uh, creative ways to, to do those concerts and those graduations and, and some fun things. But um, we're just setting up the, the background that can handle all the traffic and that can uh, teachers can access so they don't feel they're, that they're out there alone. We've used the experts in the field of the experts in the social studies, experts in math to really help uh, build those competencies and, and uh, hope to share that knowledge. But the one thing we don't want is, I mean, don't be anxious about it. Don't worry about academics. We're going to get through. We're going to get to the end of the year, and there's going to be time. And one of the best things about learning online is it's um, your your pace and your place and your space. So uh, we can uh, make sure that we uh, individualize this to to help kids uh, move through to what they want to do. We have not forgotten about forgotten rather about colleges. We are still working on our end with transcripts, things like that that we need to assist with. So uh, the more that we have people connected and talking with each other, the more work we know that we need to get done and we'll uh, have those deliverables ready. That's fantastic. Dr. Bishop, thank you so much for joining us today. We know you are super busy right now, as everyone is. Uh, please uh, feel free to join us at any time. You know the call-in link and we would love if you came in with any information as you get it. Thank That's you very good. much. As of yesterday, I have to work from my home too because they are <laughs> shutting the buildings down and and this is literally my den, so I yep. feel at home on your yep. show. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, that's that's great. We're all in our own little dens right now, and and so that's fantastic. That was that was that was punny. That was good. That was, this was a good day today. All right, so I've been kicked out two folks, which means that Thursday you're gonna see it from my den, which is kind of a scary place. So thanks again to Dr. Bishop. Uh, we're glad that you were able to join us. Um, now we're going to move in for Dr. Allman. Uh, Dr. Allman, if you could give us the kind of school kind of view, and I know that this is specific to South, but if we have parents and students out there that are watching from other schools, it's pretty much similar information is what I'm guessing is going out to you guys as well. So we're going we're gonna to take it over to Dr. Allman and let him give an overview kind of what to expect over the next few days as students and what to expect as parents. And then we'll get into the question portion of the show. Good Go morning, ahead. everyone. Um, glad to be here. It's good to see students again, too. I'll just say that like right up front. I haven't seen students in what two, three weeks now, so it's a little strange. Um, but good, to, good to be here virtually um, and hear the conversation. Um, I think the biggest um, point that needs to be delivered at the school level is that our core academic classes uh, will begin on Tuesday, March 31st. That's one day um, after the governor's closure, which carries us through March 30th. And on March 31st, um, students will be able to log on to Canvas and see the course content. Um, students should be aware that this is gonna look a little bit different. Um, so if you're in an English 4 class, say, and you're a senior, um, that English 4 content is going to look the same across all teachers because it's going to be standardized content and you will have to get through that content and that's what will be uh, used to figure your grade. And that'll be a continuation of what's already in that grade book for that particular course that you're taking. So um, the course won't change on your transcript. Your grade won't have changed from what you had before spring break. This will just continue in a little different fashion um, what you were doing in person during third quarter. So that's the 31st, that's for core academics. 
Um, so you should be expecting to hear from those teachers first. And that, that goes for every um, high school student, certainly. Um, and then on April 13th, April 13th is the tentative launch date uh, for electives to come online. Um, and so that there's about a two week gap there where hopefully um, we can encourage students to really get a, a quick start and try to get through some of that core content um, to make sure, put some grades in the grade book and we get into a new, new routine and, and resume learning. And then I know students um, live for electives a lot of times. And I mean, this show by itself is a good example of that. Um, you're gonna get access to some things like that. So be looking for that on April 13th. And I think our elective teachers may well uh, reach out to you. And while they may not have specific content in their Canvas shell, um, we're going to hold some office hours in the morning and in the afternoon for our students. And then there will be a schedule during the week that works on an every other day basis where students will have the ability to connect with their content teachers and we won't be scheduling content over one another. So there will be kind of a math slot, an English slot, a history slot, a science slot, an elective slot, so on and so forth. And as soon as I have a solidified schedule, um, I will put that out there. Um, I've been sending almost daily emails um, out to our community and those may get a little bit less just as we get more certainty um, on the information. Um, but I did stand up a new website and I'll put any recent content there including a link to this show. Um, and that's just dralman.com. Um, and if you wanna to subscribe to that, you can also get the content sent straight to your email. Um, and my Twitter feed is also there. If you're on Twitter, that's another way um, to get quick updates. And that's at Dr. Underscore Allman. Hey, since we're taking the time to jump down and throw down the social media and subscription aspects of the show, uh, go ahead and make sure you, what is it again? What do we say? How do we do it? What do we do to that like button, smash folks? Smash that like button. We got to smash that like button, folks. Make sure you uh, uh, su subscribe to the channel. And I was told the other day nobody says smash that like button. But I just want to let you know, now there are two people that have said smash that like button. So we are not nobody and don't take away our, our personhood. All right. So uh, we do have some other guests today uh, that you're looking at their faces and may not recognize who they are. So we're going to introduce them a little bit. First off, if you would take a gander, we have the... The wonderful Unger twins. Go ahead and give us a wave, folks. They're joining us, uh, and, and that's fantastic. Clara wanted me to point out that she is the studio manager and the better twin, uh, whereas Grace definitely wanted to remind everyone she was born first. Um, and then we also have, if you notice, we got Mr. Tim Pernage, whose title this week is Master of the Universe. So we're not going to play too much into that. He said we were underdoing his title. Um, so uh, it was, yeah, an underwhelming title. And then all, uh, there's Bria. Everybody wave to Bria. Bria's here with us. Uh, Bria is our social media guru, and she is a, the utility player, which apparently is a sports ball reference I don't understand. So with no further ado, we are going to hand this off because there's lots of questions that have come in to Clara from the southvote.com, which, again, if you have questions, we have the Commissioner of Education coming in this week we may have mayor berkowitz coming in this week lots of questions not just about school but maybe about town and, and what's going on and what to expect and what's changed get those questions into southvote.com um, and if you're joining us on the live feeds you can always put those uh questions into the live chat so handing it over to clara now clara do you want to be hard for them to do online work is there still going to be a chance for them to graduate Um, if I'm taking that one, I would say yes, absolutely. Um, we're going to do everything we can um, to get students the classes they need to graduate. Um, you should be aware that um, counselors have been working um, since late last week, um, specifically to go through the seniors on their list to see who might be in jeopardy of not graduating um, based on what credits or grades. Um, and I would imagine that they're going to begin reaching out to those students very soon so that when we get restarted on the 31st, um, each of those folks has a workable plan and knows what needs to be done for graduation. Again, I would kind of go back to what I said earlier. Um, there's a certain amount of non-negotiable content that you're going to have to get through in each of your courses on Canvas. Um, and I think it's going to be very doable. So even if you need to structure your time where you knock out one course in a specific set of days and then you move on to the next one, 
because you just want to focus on one kind of subject at a time, that's going to be something that's possible. So um, we're going to do everything we can to give you the most uh, tools that we can to get you to graduation. Okay, here's another question uh, about spring sports. It says, will there be any? And if so, which ones? So where are we at on that? Uh, yesterday, officially, ASAA announced that all spring sports practices, conditioning, and the rest are canceled. Um, that's primarily because of the large group nature of many activities. So no activities this spring. Um, I know it's, it's a big disappointment for a lot of folks um, who are anticipating uh, being able to participate, but for the time being, I would say absolutely get outside and be active. It's part of being healthy and happy, uh, but it's just not going to be in an organized way um, in athletics. And that's statewide. That's not just ASD or just South. That's That applies statewide to all activities. Okay. And Grace also has a question. Um, she says she's relying on her sports uh, to cover her PE credits as like a waiver. Uh, because the spring season is canceled, how do you suggest she gets her PE credits? I anticipate that uh, students who were depending on waivers, um, and especially who would even be just that quarter credit short, um, will get a waiver anyway, because that's something that's beyond their control. Um, I haven't gotten an answer that's certain on that, but that's the current um, trend in the thinking about how we'll deal with that. So. As soon as I have more um, certain information, I'll make sure to share it with counselors and then counselors can also talk to uh, seniors who are in that scenario. Okay, um, someone asked, will we be able to get items from our locker? As of right now, um, no one is um, accessing the building and I'm sort of lying because Lee's sitting there right in the middle uh, hosting today, but um, this will be the last time that we are live for the foreseeable future from the actual school um, in part because it was uh, an equipment issue this morning but um, for now we're not um, just because there's actually no staff at the building there's physically no one there so um, I know it's a need and um, as was mentioned earlier by Dr. Bishop um, we're going to be handing out a lot of technology at some point that means we're going to have to open our door um, to get that technology to the folks who need it if there are some really essential needs um, or kind of a really urgent things that are needed inside the building, um, we'll see what we can't do to coordinate uh, getting those things to parents or students in association to with the technology getting handed out. But I would anticipate that that would be by appointment. It would be kind of a very specific five to 10 minute window, get in, get out, so that we're not um, you know, exposing people more than we need to. Um, to the potential. Uh, okay. Um, should seniors drop classes they do not need to graduate? Seniors will be able to drop classes that they don't need um, to graduate. So I think that that should really be a conversation with um, your individual counselor. Um, and while it's possible to drop classes that you don't need for graduation, I'd also consider, you know, this is going to be different for every senior, but what is your workload? What are you really interested in? Um, I wouldn't want you to drop something you're really interested in if it mean if you can also get the core content done that you need for graduation. So those are just kind of one one by one situations and hopefully decisions that each senior can make and and have conversations with parents. parents and okay, Dr. how do you Almond. suggest those seniors um, contact their counselors? Uh, you can email them um, and and ask those questions. It would probably be the best. You actually asked the same question I was going to ask. Um, with that, though, keep in mind that they are probably rifling through a significant amount of emails per day, and then it might take uh, some time for them to get back to you. So if they haven't responded quite right away, hold on. They're, they're getting through the list. And everyone's learning how to uh, take care of new systems, and new systems are coming in every single day, so I'm sure that some form of communication will go out for an easy, this is who I am, this is my counselor, this is what I need, um, and to make that figure out so we can get a nice spreadsheet set up. Uh, we do have another guest joining us today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Dr. Michael Johnson, Commissioner of Education for the State of Alaska. Welcome to the show, Dr. Johnson. 
Oh, thanks, Lee. It's great to be here. Uh, Dr. Johnson, we've gotten the 10,000 foot kind of view of ASD today, and we're getting the like 522 foot view of South as a school right now. And then in just a few minutes, I would love it if you could give us kind of that 30,000 foot view of the state as a whole. We did just hear about the ASAA uh, decision for spring sports, and I'm wondering maybe what else you could give us uh, from the state level about what we can expect over the next few weeks as a state and, and kind of what information you can hand out and hopefully even some, some good stuff. Yeah, uh, well, I got to see you air type just now, so that made my day. I'm good for the rest of the day because that was pretty awesome air typing in my book. But um, I'll, uh, I'll give you a 30,000 foot view um, and then just answer questions. That's, that seems to be most helpful when I, when I do these Zooms is uh, just to see what's on folks' mind and answer questions. But, Thanks for letting me be here. I um, spent a chunk of my weekend watching past episodes and just love what you and your kids are doing um, at, with the den and it was really fun. So thanks for a chance to be here. So um, as you know, um, and I heard you say this um, on the den and, and um, uh, Principal Allman and things are changing so quickly, you know, from day to day that everybody's just trying to adapt and make things work. Um, we started with the, uh, um, school closure and closure is not quite the right word i'm not sure what the right word is because we're still having school we're still learning um, folks are still engaged in education um, we're just not doing it in the school building and so um, that now is extended uh, through may 1st um, if um, by chance things get lots better and clear up you know it, we can um, go ahead and tell schools they can reopen if they want to um, but it doesn't look like um, that's going to happen very quickly. And so we're in this new new arrangement. Um, but I'm hearing stories all over the place of great things happening. So no matter where you are, if you're a teacher, you're still a teacher. And if you're a student, you're a student no matter where you are. And so we just have to uh, connect that relationship in new ways. Um, but man, people are doing it. They're doing some really neat things. Um, what you're doing here is one example. We have another community where um, kids are showing up at a point uh, place to get their lunch. They're getting a packet of learning materials and glue sticks and whatever else they need. They take that home. They do their work. They come back the next day to get their lunch and drop off materials. So they got that going in one of the communities. Another community, um, a teacher is uh, doing story time with their kids every day by CB radio. And turns out everybody in the community is tuning in and listening to the story and really getting into it. So, um, you know, I've got a lot of confidence in our kids in this state. They're going to make this work, and they're going to show the world that um, a virus is not going to keep them from learning and becoming what they were meant to be. Well, that is fantastic. Uh, wow. I mean, was that written? Because that was <laughs> phenomenal. That was fantastic. Uh, first off, like CB Radio Storytime, I want to be involved in that, just listening right. to it, because it reminds me of the opening scenes of Big Trouble in Little China, where he's on the Pork Chop Express and he's telling his stories. Fantastic film. You can see that Claire and Grace are big fans of that film. Um, and, and so those of you out there, remember, I can't tell you what movies to watch, folks, but that's a good movie. Um, it's definitely one you should check out at some point in your life when you're allowed to. Claire is just like, I lost three hours of my life. I'll never get back. I feel uh, like there's so many movies you have recommended. It's just <laughs> There is a list. There is a list. It's very, very long. All right. And so kind of um, maybe there's some questions in the chat. I don't know. I know that uh, Master of the Universe there is monitoring the chat. Maybe there's a question or two that might uh, relate to the commissioner right now. Or if Dr. Allman has any questions that he'd like to put up. I mean, this, what an, int I have like two, I've had three of my bosses in one place today. I am definitely watching my step. Um, so <laughs> here we go. Um, did you have any questions in the chat there, Mr. Pernan? Do you wanted to throw out that maybe either of these two gentlemen could answer? So uh, a lot, it's, the chat's actually been kind of quiet. Um, and there are a few teachers, shout out to Amy uh, Haverstad for being in there. They're answering a lot of those questions as we go. Um, the biggest question in here is what happened to the root beer making? Oh, yeah. So we get to that at the end of today's show. We get your root beer recipe. We get the first activity for the Zoom Olympics that we're going to start highlighting here on the den. Um, and we have some good news from around the district as well for other 
opportunities that are coming in uh, from different schools. And I guess since we're being asked it, we could throw it out there right now if I have no objections from, from the, the two gentlemen in the bottom middle and bottom right of the screen there. All right, cool. I will jump to that really quickly and let folks know, hey, root beer. So here's the deal. We have a project going on with the local business and it was going very, very well. Uh, to provide root beer making kits to folks around town. Now that was before the hunker down order. So right now we're working out the logistics of either delivery of root beer making kits and or curbside service of root beer kits. They're trying to keep them very low cost, enough to make about six bottles of root beer at a batch, uh, including the roots that you need and the sugars you need and things like that for very low, low cost. And they even brought up the idea, if all goes well, that at the end of all of this, when we can all get back together, bring your favorite root beer from the favorite batch that you made, and they'll have a competition for the golden root. So there's number one. So I'm just waiting to get that kind of clarification on how we're gonna be able to deliver the root beer making kits to the community, and then we'll start with the recipes as far as we need to go from there. Very inexpensive, they kept them very low cost so that people can get a hold of those and do those at home. A lot of that stuff you'll be able to do with stuff you have from home as long as you have the right sanitation equipment. Um, then moving into our Zoom Olympics. This week's challenge, and I will hit it again before the end of the show, is our paper airplane making competition. Uh, the winners will be chosen by the look of the aircraft, the distance the aircraft can fly within your home, and the straightness of the flight path and you will be able to build your paper airplanes, take pictures and video of that airplane working, and email those directly to southanchoragenews at gmail.com. So that's our first activity in the Zoom Olympics. We will get all of that information put together. Make sure your videos are to us by Friday, because that way our lead editor, who right now is wearing cardboard boxes and pretending that he lives in a cubicle world online, will put everything together so we can see what you made, you can see what you made, and everyone watching can see what you made. Okay, and then we're gonna move into another bit of good news, and it comes back to the commissioner talking about that CB radio piece. We have a great librarian over at Huffman Elementary School, Every day at 11 o'clock, she has been hosting story time on Zoom. And we were able to get her a domain and make it really easy for you to get in there and take a look at it. You can go participate in story time with your young kids or set it up for your little brothers and sisters because I'm telling you, if your parents are working from home, they're gonna love the fact that they're gonna be engaged on something like this for a little while and not ripping around the house, destroying each other and where they live. Um, and if you're watching younger brothers and sisters and you're a student, it's gonna give you a little bit of downtime from kind of keeping track of that. You can go there every day at 11 at huffmanstorytime.org. You don't need to remember anything else. Just go to huffmanstorytime.org. And any device, when you first go there, it will prompt you to uh, download the Zoom app. Go ahead and take care of that. And um, then anytime they type that in, they can be there for story hour. It's fantastic. My two little kids do it every day and it is the bright spot of their day because the rest of the day they see me. And so seeing other people their age really makes them happy. Um, and then last but not least, before we move into um, getting into some more questions and some more information from our guests, I did want to say that shout out, big shout out to DJ Spencer Lee. Do I hear anything from there about DJ Spencer DJ Lee? Spencer DJ Lee. Spencer DJ Lee. Spencer Lee. DJ Spencer Lee has been talking to me on and on about what we can do to make this a little bit smoother of a year for you folks, especially with the news of things like prom and graduation and now spring sports and all those things. He and I are working on an idea to have what will be wonderfully called the virtual prom is the goal this year. So setting up a virtual prom across ASD for students to participate in. And it's bigger than just the event itself, but the idea of virtual prom ask outs highlighted here on the den. Um, and so we're kind of working on that. But before we dig too deep into the logistics of that world, we need to know from you, is this something that you want? Do ASD students want us to go through the work of putting together a space for you guys to highlight, you know, whatever it is you're wearing, your dance skills, your and your your ask outs and all the things that lead up to prom. This is our opportunity to do it in a virtual setting and try something new. Uh, I'll take it over to you cats over there because your kids, you know better than I know. Does that sound interesting to you at all? 
Anything with DJ Spencer Lee sounds interesting. <laughs> Anything with DJ Spencer Lee sounds interesting. I would completely agree. So you need to let us know. So you can let us know in the live chat. You can let us know in the comments below. You can, you can put that information into southvote.com and let us know, yes, virtual prom. Just got a, a message that Dr. Allman did lose his internet. That has been happening, which gets us into another point. Uh, Thursday, we're going to be highlighting... Uh, uh, ACS is looking at providing some internet uh, help. Um, GCI is, is working on a project too, and we'll have that information in. We're trying to get some folks in from there. Um, so if we could get back uh, to questions that don't relate to me and root beer, uh, Mr. Pernage, that would be fantastic. That's what really what everybody wants to know about. All right, <laughs> so, uh, so a lot of these, again, are going to be answered in this, but I just want to get them out there on the stream. Um, will there be a schedule for when students, teachers will be live for questions? And the answer to that is yes. Um, we're working on that. We're finalizing it. I've seen a schedule, but it's somewhat tentative right now. Basically, it's going to be, you know, like Mondays and Wednesday from noon to one will be math department and all the math teachers will be live on their Zoom. And then from one to two, it'll be the science department and so on and so forth. So it'll be like blocked schedule for the week when they will be on at a standard time. Um, but what that looks like, we're working on that still. Okay, so hang tight. I know for my classes, I'm going to meet with all my students today at noon, um, just so that they can ask questions and, and come up with ideas and we can just kind of start getting into a regular schedule. Um, While you're looking there, uh, girls, did you have any questions for the commissioner? Because this is definitely someone who's going to be very busy over the next few weeks, months, years, forever, figuring all this stuff out. So did you guys have any bigger kind of AK questions for the commissioner? Um, I think people are wondering if summer school is still available. I think that's like a district thing, but um, I think I saw something about how people who aren't worried about graduating, can they do summer school still? Yeah, so I'll, I'll answer first and then uh, somebody from the district can answer. So I, I'm sure there'll be some opportunities in ASD. Um, Later this week, you're hearing it here first, we're going to um, put up a virtual school, Alaska Virtual Academy. Um, you would still be an ASD student, but you'll be able to enroll in courses through the summer through the Virtual Academy. And there'll be um, dozens and dozens of courses available through that, and those would be for credit. Okay, that's, that's great, good question. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, I just wanna point that out. Ah! And I lost my heady headphones. So I'll have to plug that back in. <laughs> While he's doing that, um, we'll get back to some questions here. If we paid for a sport, uh, will we be getting a refund and how will that be taken care of? Don't call the school, folks. There's no one there to answer the phones. Uh, we're working on that. They're going to issue uh, refunds from the district level. So just, just be patient with that. It'll come out when, when they can get to it. It's not necessarily the highest priority right now, but it is on the radar. Cool. Fantastic. Um, anyone else? Uh, have anything for Dr. Johnson? Bria, you, you have this look on your face. It's like oh. I have millions of questions. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, Dr. Johnson, you are free to stay and hang out with us, but I know that you may have other meetings. So at any point when you drop out, thank you so much. We've enjoyed you being here. Please come back. Um, and when I know we can get a whole pile of questions for you from uh, southboat.com, folks, um, we'll make sure to get a hold of you and let you know. That's fine, and even if there's no questions, it's fun to join. So thanks for the opportunity. And hey, make your you. paper airplane. Get that sent over to South Anchorage News at gmail.com. Will do. All right, take care. All right, folks, let's uh, move down our agenda real quick. We're, we're moving quickly. Um, let's see. I think we've covered just about everything that we have on the list. Uh, you guys. I have a question. Yes. Okay. Um, any seniors who are graduating that get like special awards, seals of biliteracy, honor grad, what's going to happen with that? You know, uh, we don't really have that answered between the two of us right now. I'm sure that it's a question that's going on um, and trying to be figured out. I know that we have for, for video kids that have been involved for a long time, we have a cord that usually goes out at graduation. We have video awards, which is super huge, which we're still trying to figure out the answer to. Um, and we have a scholarship that we have to do as well. So I know that from our perspective, you know I'm going to find some way to do it online. And, and we're going to do it that way, even if I have to ship it to your parents and not tell you about it if you got the scholarship and they come in with a big check. and Oh, my goodness, you've won! Right? So it's it's going to be fun like that. Um, and, and this is the chance for us to start having those conversations and really thinking about 
Um, how can we change the delivery of stuff like that? You're still going to earn what you have earned, but the delivery of it's going to change, and, and, and the delivery of everything is changing, which is a good segue um, to Clara, who has a list of businesses here in town, um, and she's just going to kind of go over the, the gist of what's happening. Ooh, Dr. Allman is coming back. We'll hit him with that question in just a minute. But first, give us that list of uh, businesses in town that are still kind of running, but the delivery has changed. Yeah, so we have businesses who, whose business model kind of really lends to this really well. Uncle Joe's is still delivering and picking up. Um, I work there, I would appreciate it if you lend your business there. Um, there are Crush uh, Bistro has a, like a family style take home um and eat like a nice dinner program um it's really nice we had it a few days ago really good it's really good and it's kind of a good option for like a nice sit down family dinner if you really want to um Kaladis and black cup coffee i know are two coffee shops that are delivering coffee beans to your house which is an essential i kind of want to do that uh summit spice and tea also i think is delivering tea to your house um and and, and spice there are always, yeah there are always uh um Restaurants that are doing pickup, so Great Harvest Bread Company, Snow City Cafe, Sal, Bear Tooth, Moose's Tooth, um, Lawn Pad Thai, Lucky Wishbone still has their drive through Wild Scoops, you can take out pints, uh, businesses are really adapting to it, and hopefully um, in a later show we can have spotlights on those businesses, we'll see. Cool, and we'll get a list into the uh, description. Uh, below on some of those that are coming up and you'll be able to kind of see what is being offered. One of the big things about whether or not uh, Mayor Berkowitz joins us on Thursday, one of the big questions we have for him is what I'm getting a lot from folks are, hey, we want to help people out because I think everyone's starting to learn that there's some people really hurting uh, here in Anchorage as this goes on. A lot of people aren't able to work and, and, and aren't being paid as they're not able to work and, and I'm getting a lot of people calling in and writing in asking how, how can we help but still kind of mitigate the risk of exposing ourselves or our families to something like that. So, so make sure you tune in on Thursday at 9 o'clock in the morning because we're going to post that question to the mayor because I'm sure he has a good view of some of the good things that are happening here in town and, and how people can help out if they uh, have the opportunity to do so. Uh, Dr. Allman, while you were out, oh, Clara's got a hand. Um, I also have an answer from somebody I like uh, working in the industry. I, a lot of restaurants are doing contact free pickup and delivery. So I know that Uncle Joe's, if you call or order online, you just have to specify contact free. You pick it up, we'll bring it out to your car. If it's delivery, you just pay on the phone and we'll drop it at your door. So I'm sure a lot of businesses are doing that as well and you can just request it. Cool. So contact free is the word of choice, folks, for delivery services and pickup services. That way you can pay uh, one way and not get a, a handful of change, right? Um, and so that's kind of it. Dr. Allman, while you were away, you might be worried that you came back because we got hit with a big question. So I'm going to let you uh, take that to Clara or Bria. Um, <laughs> Bria has a question. I, oh, my question was, oh, <laughs> my question was, um, what happens to people who are getting special commendations when they graduate? So it's by literacy, honor grad, special board, um, National Honor Society. How's that going to change with the new graduation format? Um, first off, I'm not sure what the new graduation format is going to be at this point. Um, you know, undoubtedly, we will still put something in print like we always do with a uh, program, which will have those recognitions listed um, by graduate. Uh, I think it highly depends on how that graduation ceremony occurs. Um, if we were to have a virtual graduation and assuming that we had uh, graduates with their gowns and their cords, I'm not sure how that looks either because we were just talking before the show about what a virtual prom looks like when you're dancing by yourself. A lot room. of fun is what it looks yeah. like. Uh, um, I, I think there, the recognition will happen. Let's just put it that way. How it will happen is a much bigger question. All right. Well, there's your answer. Uh, Bria, you had a question about NHS hours. Yeah, I was just wondering how are we going to earn those hours now that we can't be doing group activities? So will we just get an extension on our time to turn those in or how is that going to look? 
I will, uh, if Miss Dietrich happens to be watching, I guess she could weigh in on the chat, but um, if not, I will ask her that question, and then when we get back on Thursday, uh, I can make sure to share that with the group. Okay. Fantastic. We have another question about NHS from South Boat. Um, how are we still going to have an induction? Uh, what's the induction ceremony going to look like? I'm, I'm going to take this one if that's all right, just because we're, we're seeing the same question about all these different things. When big groups of people come together, we, we can't do it. It's not going to happen. So everyone is coming up with a new way to make that big group dynamic take place with, you know, me alone in a building the size of eight football fields. Um, so that's, that's a new way we have to think about our reality and about our world. And what, what a great, I mean, it's scary, so don't think I'm saying it's great, but what a great opportunity to explore and exercise what it means to uh, connect in different ways. Uh, it's no longer just a choice medium. Now it's, it's how we're talking. It's how, we're, how do we enjoy each other's company from a distance this far away. Um, so a lot of that is stuff that people are figuring out. And, and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson just said you know, last week, he's like, take a look, people. We're in a giant experiment right now. And, and that's definitely where we're at. And, and we need to see it from that perspective sometimes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Mr. Pernage, do you have yes, sir. lots of stuff for us? I do have a little bit. Uh, so Miss Bria Bork, Bjork, <laughs> it was uh, asking uh, what the student schedule is going to look like online. And uh, I'll, t I'll take this first part here. Uh, it's essentially going to be uh, you got to kind of make your own schedule. The teachers will be available um, online live at certain times to help guide you through and, and give you questions and, and answer those um, but you need to kind of set your schedule you need to get up in the morning you need to get dressed you need to you know work on the work you need to make your own lunch you need to get going on things uh, getting a routine is going to be very very important for you uh, starting next week we are going to start rolling out the core classes you're going to have some assignments to do um, it's not going to be as intense as it was before uh, but you do have some things to accomplish so get those done get those out of the way work ahead if you want to and can and then later on we will start rolling out more of the elective courses and some of the more supplementary stuff for you to get done so get into a routine uh, that's the biggest part of that and and to play off of that just a little bit while he pulls up the next question uh you know it, he really means get into a routine have an hour where you're working on math right so you guys have been locked up cooped up not a lot to do. You can only look at somebody's story 300 times before it's the same thing. Um, and so I, I will say that from our house, uh, the firstborn, the heir to the throne, uh, got like five weeks worth of math stuff and decided to do it all in one day. And, and by the end of it, walked out of the room like this, right? And so you need to make sure you're, you're pacing yourself and setting that schedule. Thank you, Mr. Pernage, for kind of getting that because it's going to take discipline to not overdo it and just break your brain on day one and then pass out for a week. Yeah, I was working on uh, some coding stuff, getting my classes ready yesterday, and I lost track of time and it ended up being 8 o'clock when I realized I hadn't really left my office much. So uh, it's easy to do, uh, set time, set alarms. Um, I usually, when I'm working at home, set an alarm for an hour, work for an hour, take an hour break, do some different things. Um, so set a routine. And All right. Set a routine for getting outside and taking a walk and doing some push-ups and getting some air and doing those kinds of things. It's easy to forget. It's so easy to forget. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Mr. Pernage. So, uh, Dr. Allman, this one will be for you. Uh, I'm, I'm getting some things on the chat talking about uh, parents being concerned about being able to help their students uh, with their uh, curriculum and how science and math and things that they haven't really done in 20 years. Uh, any comments on that? Now, I think justifiable um, concern, and I don't think that it's necessarily confined to high school even. Um, I've been in conversation uh, with my folks back in Indiana, and they're trying to teach a four and a six-year-old right now and adapt to their technology um, to even do the, the fourth grade math homework. So um, I think we're all in a, in a similar situation facing that challenge. Um, but more to the point, I think those teachers are well aware of the challenge that it's going to be. Um, to work a little bit more autonomously. I can't promise, but I would anticipate that some of those teachers will um, do quick film tutorials or video demonstrations of the kind of complex calculations and thinking 
that needs to happen um, in those courses and be able to post that. Um, and again, when the office hours um, portion of this is posted and it's more certain, um, that would be an opportunity two to three times a week at least um, to check in with the teacher. So I think I would go back to, to what Mr. Pernage said about routine. If you can put yourself on a routine and you know you're gonna have a really challenging course and parents aren't as able to help and you know that you have two to three check-ins a week plus office hours almost every day, it would be good to work through a little bit of chunk of that material, know what your questions are, make sure to get some answers to those and to reach out to your peers and then make sure you're there to check in and put yourself on a pace even more so in those classes, which you know are gonna be challenging. So I think a combination of those things are gonna be necessary to get through some of those um, higher echelon academic courses. Fantastic. Um, I don't know if like the tutor organizations that are existing in South right now have thought about this, but our tutors, um, like student tutors still going to be holding sessions like over Zoom or anything? Is that something that should be set up? I, I would, my perspective would be that if the teacher who was coordinating that um, tutoring, assuming there was a teacher coordinating that tutoring, um, if they chose perhaps during part of their time during the week to do that, um, that we could put that out there. Um, it, to me, what it looks like is there's going to be an hour window in the morning and an hour window in the afternoon where it's kind of open tutoring and you can access, you know, kind of your choice of what you need tutoring in. Um, and one thing that we could start to work on is try to figure out what the schedule looks like in those time periods so that um, you have the best access to the most most teachers. And, and kind of play off that and maybe put two questions together at once because we've heard it a couple times, right? We have three things that are being asked right now, right? We have, hey, how can I get NHS hours? Uh, we have, how can I help people without um, putting myself at risk? And we have, can students still hold tutoring sessions as students helping out over something like Zoom? So I think we can put all these together and I guess pose the question, can we have the discussion of whether or not students in NHS that need those hours could host uh, tutoring sessions for different um, topics and different classes, maybe outside of the normal Zoom hours of class, because tutoring happens outside of class. Um, is it possible that they could host those and track those hours and maybe count that towards that NHS time? Maybe that's the conversation to be having with the NHS folks. I'm sure there's some NHS officers in Ms. Dietrich watching right now, so. So, so give us your answers in the chat, folks, um, or plan on coming in to the show uh, virtually, of course, in this nice squared. Look, look, it's like I can, but then it goes away and I can't actually touch you. All right. So um, that's kind of where we're at on that. And that's a conversation that we'll have more information for hopefully on Thursday, whether it comes into the chat and we record that or we get someone in to talk to us a little bit about on it Thursday. Um, Unless somebody else has something really pressing, I think we're getting close to a point where people are going to start shutting down on their brains. Um, this is a long show today. We got a lot of information out. Stuff to take away. Uh, no sports. Uh, except for our sports. So make a paper airplane and um, send the video and pictures of that paper airplane to uh, southanchoragenews at gmail.com. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so that you can be here every Tuesday and Thursday, um, hunkered down and paying attention to what's happening. Root beer recipes, all we gotta do is figure out the delivery of the kits, which we should figure out today, and I'll have more information on Thursday. We cracked open our first batch at the house and it was delicious. Um, and so, and then the other piece is uh, Huffman story time. If you got little ones running around that house, that starts in one hour and 11 minutes at huffmanstorytime.org. Make sure you go check that out. I believe today is uh, favorite sock day, so make sure your little ones have funny socks on in order to show everyone. They're gonna, a bunch of people putting their, uh, you know, a bunch of people are gonna be putting their feet up to the camera. Look at my socks. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, so uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, last but not least, uh, make sure you come back, put your questions at southvote.com. Remember, you can access this here at wolverineden.org. You can see everything that we've been doing um, with some archive material at sahsmedia.com. Uh, that's a lot of different dots, uh, so we'll get those put into the uh, pieces in a little bit. Folks online, you're on screen right now if you want to say goodbye to our wonderful listeners. Um, uh -huh. 
and I kind of jumped on it. Did anyone have anything else before we go? Um, the Enchanted Alaska thing. Ooh, Enchanted Alaska. Do you have the, uh, the information on where that's at? Is it just Enchanted it's, Alaska's Facebook page? Yeah, it's on Facebook Live at 11 o'clock. Um, can't really say much about it, but Elsa is going to be very familiar. Apparently, Elsa is going to be there to answer questions. She's reading stories. And reading stories. And, I, and so I thought that started at 10.15. Is it at 11 o'clock now? I think it's 11. That's okay. So all kinds of story opportunity for folks out there. You got uh, Enchanted Alaska. Check out their Facebook page for that Facebook Live. You have HuffmanStoryTime.org, uh, where a bunch of little kids get to see each other's faces, and they just have a blast. Um, anything else for the good of the order? Nope. All right. Well, thank you very much over there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us at The Den. We truly, truly appreciate that uh, you are trying to get information and getting information out to folks. Uh, we're looking at Thursday. Thursday, we're looking at bringing folks in. Uh, the mayor might be coming in, as well as hopefully the president of the school board, Star Marset, uh, will be coming in to talk a little bit about uh, where the school board's sitting on everything and, and how we're all feeling there. Thank you again. Stay clean, stay sharp. Um, everybody back home, you want to join me on this? One, two, three. Keep your paws, paws clean, clean and your claws, <laughs> claws sharp, Wolverines. That's too much. That's too much. We got to clean that up. Paws. Keep your paws, claws, people. What's up?